Welcome to the God's Cottage channel and a very special welcome to those of you who at this stage truly are my YouTube family. I remember your intentions every morning in Mass. Visitors to the channel of course are always welcome and likewise welcome to become part of our YouTube family if you feel led. St. Paul faced quite an amount of opposition in his preaching. We can see this from his letters. On one occasion he declared, we are not trying to please people but God who tests our hearts. And on another occasion he declared, if I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Jesus Christ. I know and fully accept that not everybody will be pleased with this video. And I'm quite okay with that. But just a couple of ground rules. In your comments, you're free to say whatever you like to me and to call me whatever name you wish. That's okay with me. The, the only one I'm concerned about pleasing is Jesus Christ. And what people say concerning me won't worry me in the least. However, if you go in under other people's comments and reply to their comments, your reply should be in some way related to that person's comment. You don't start going in under everybody's comments and putting in some general comment of your own. If you want to put a general comment, put it up front. Recently, for example, uh, one person went in under other people's comments and put what I would consider a very objectionable comment, calling certain people Nazis. Nazis just because they were doing their work. Now, had that person put their comment up front, I would have explained to them quite simply that their comment wasn't really a Christian comment. It wasn't worthy of a disciple of Jesus Christ. But instead, they went in under several other people's comments on a number of my videos, putting in that same comment, calling people Nazis who were just doing their work. I won't stand for that. And I blocked that person. Perhaps after a month or two I'll unblock them. But for the moment that person is blocked. Another thing which I will not stand for is any form of abuse of or aggressive replies to other people's comments. It doesn't mean that you have to agree with what they say. But your replies should be quite polite. And again, if there's any form of aggression in it, hostility in it, you will be blocked. This channel is dedicated to God who is love and seeking to respond to God who is love. Now I know that the video I'm making today that some of you won't like it and some of you may have strong comments about it. Put them up front, address them at myself but don't put them in underneath anybody else's comments. I've come to believe that there actually is a great world conspiracy where COVID-19 is concerned. And that the one behind this conspiracy has four aims. Number one, to kill off as many committed Christians as possible. Number two, to bring discredit upon pro-life groups. Number three, to bring discredit upon those working for renewal within the Catholic Church. Number four, to stir up ungodly division within the Catholic Church. And I will now bring you the evidence. Let us look first to Tanzania. In recent months here in Ireland, and I suspect elsewhere in the world, those who denied the reality of COVID and tried to claim it was only a bit of a cold or just an ordinary flu. The one world leader they really looked to and held up as an example was President Magafoli of Tanzania. Last year, after three days of prayer, President Magafoli declared Tanzania free of COVID. Free of COVID. No wonder the COVID deniers here in Ireland were thrilled with him. He declared, 
we Tanzanians have not locked ourselves down. And I don't expect to announce even a single day that we are implementing a lockdown because our God is still alive and he will continue protecting us Tanzanians. But we shall also continue taking precautions, including steaming. You steam, at the same time pray to God, and going on with your daily activities, so that you eat well and your body builds up immunity against the coronavirus. Now prayer is good and necessary. In March of last year, I stated that this virus could not be defeated without the help of God. And I still state the same regardless of the vaccines. This virus cannot be defeated without the help of God. And I think that is proved true by all the new variants that are springing up. Eventually there will be variants that will be resistant to the present vaccines. It's inevitable. This virus will not be defeated without the help of God. However, prayer and good practice go hand in hand. There is no point in praying for God's protection on the roads and then walking down the middle of a jewel carriageway. Such prayer would be a form of insult to God. Do not expect prayer to be answered if it is not accompanied by good practice. Meanwhile, despite the mounting evidence to the contrary, President Magafuli continued to maintain that Tanzania was clear of COVID-19. Even with the mounting number of burials, the mounting number of funerals, oh no, he continu continued to insist that Tanzania was free of COVID-19. Eventually, the bishops had to step in and plead with the people. The bishops now couldn't order a shutdown. They haven't got that power. All they could do was step in and plead with the people to start taking proper precautions like wearing face masks. Several major hospitals had to actually turn people away. Not merely were their ICUs full, but all their beds were full also. Then in February of this year, Denmark reported that two of their citizens who had just returned from Tanzania had tested positive for a new variant of COVID-19, not just the ordinary one, but a new and more dangerous variant of COVID-19. And it was only then that President Magafuli admitted that it was present in their country. Then on the 27th of February, he, he himself disappeared from public view and rumors were quickly going around that he had caught the COVID-19 himself. His officials denied it. Oh no! The reason he wasn't making public appearances was that he was too busy. He was catching up on work behind the scenes. Then, on March 17th, his death was announced. The official cause given was heart failure. And indeed, he did have a heart condition. But a heart condition which would have left him very vulnerable to COVID-19. But his wasn't the only death. Several high-ranking officials around him also died, including his own chief secretary. And they didn't all get heart attacks. They died from COVID-19. Meanwhile, the leader of the opposition declared that it was highly ironic that President Magafuli, after continuing to deny, to deny, to deny the reality of COVID-19, had now himself died of it. We will never know how many thousands of people died in Tanzania as a direct result of the failure of the government there to implement proper protective procedures. Nor was President Magafuli the only world leader to start acting as if COVID-19 wasn't dangerous. Guess who was another? None other than President Putin of Russia. COVID deniers should love him because the policies he implemented were exactly the type of policies that COVID deniers were calling for. The first lockdown was ended and the country was opened up. 
so that a referendum could be held that would enable him to remain in power. And then, after that, there were no more lockdowns. There were no announcements on the national radio and television about COVID-19. No reporting of deaths. COVID deniers, they should shake hands with President Putin. Because clearly they're singing from the same hymn sheet. According to official statistics, Russia only recorded just over 94,000 deaths from COVID-19, which given the size of the country is a, very, is a relatively small number. But strange to say, the number of excess deaths, the number of extra deaths in that 12-month period over previous 12-month periods was in the region of 350,000. What did this other quarter of a million people die of? Did they too get heart attacks? In reality, 350,000 is probably an underestimate of the number who died from COVID-19 in Russia. Because on top of that 350,000 of excess deaths over what would have been the normal amount of deaths for any 12-month period, on top of that, there are also the people who who would have died anyway at some stage during the 12 month period. But instead of just dying what you might call a normal death from whatever other reason they were going to die from, they now died with COVID-19, with all the complications that created for, them, for their families and with all the extra suffering it created for themselves. Of course, if one's main interest is growing the economy and not people. If one's main interest is growing the economy, then of course it makes perfect sense to ignore COVID-19 and let it take its course. Remember that the vast majority of those who die from COVID-19 are either the elderly or those with underlying health conditions. A certain number of others as well. But the majority are elderly people, or people with underlying health conditions. So, them all dying off, that is actually a major boost to the economy. So I find it totally understandable that President Putin put the economy first, not people. But I do find it super interesting that the very policies which he pursued in Russia were precisely the policies that COVID deniers have been demanding all over the world. And we see in Russia what would have happened if the COVID deniers had been in a position to have their policies implemented. Another world leader who is a COVID denier is the far-right president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, who refuses to support either the wearing of masks and lockdowns. And where local governors try to implement policies that include the wearing of masks or that, in, that include lockdowns, Bolsonaro and his followers do everything in their power to undermine them. The result? An absolute epidemic of COVID-19 in Brazil. Nobody, nobody really knows how many people have, are dying of COVID-19 in Brazil. Some put a figure at around about 350,000, but it's absolutely impossible to know how many. There are two things that we do know. In Brazil, the normal practice is you only rent a grave. And then after a number of years, your body is dug up and what's left of your remains given back to your family. They had to speed up the digging up of remains in order to find burial ground for all the victims of COVID-19. And what's more, they had to greatly increase the opening times of graveyards. Burials are now taking place until 10 o'clock at night time. Sadly, they're literally running out of time to bury the dead. Meanwhile, many, many COVID deniers throughout the world have claimed that forcing people to wear masks and imposing lockdowns are not about COVID-19 at all, but rather 
These sort of measures they claim are part of a conspiracy to control people. Now I suggest that there is a conspiracy all right. And I suggest and I believe I know who is behind it and I'm going to name who is behind it. And I'm going to explain how he hopes to profit from it. But before we get into the conspiracy, let us ask ourselves, where do all perverse conspiracies start? Do all perverse conspiracies not start in hell? Secondly, who is the father of lies? When untruths are being told, is the father of lies not behind them? Jesus said, Satan was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So two characteristics of all Satan-inspired conspiracies are falsehoods and a lack of care for life. He's a, he was a murderer from the beginning. Recently, I uploaded a video about LifeSite News and one person put in certainly more than 40 comments underneath it. Perhaps 60, I don't know, I didn't count them. But one result of all his comments was it, it forced me to think. And I found myself thinking, how many falsehoods do LifeSite News and, and other similar people and websites have to tell in order to claim that COVID-19 is only like an ordinary flu, that the wearing of face masks is bad for you, could damage your health, and is really only a measure to control you, that likewise with the lockdowns, that they too are only to control you, perhaps even for, to force you to kill yourself. And then on top of that, that the vaccines are more dangerous than COVID-19 itself. Now I found myself, as I kept answering this person's comment after comment after comment after comment, the thought struck me. How many falsehoods does LifeSite News and similar sites have to tell in order to keep up the, these claims? Now perhaps that will be the theme of one of my coming videos. How many falsehoods does a website have to tell in order to keep claiming that COVID-19 is only the same as a flu, that the masks are bad for you, that the lockdowns are bad for the country and bad for people, and that the vaccines are most likely worse than COVID-19 itself? Would you like to have a guess on that? Perhaps write down a figure. Interesting one. Try it out. If you have spare time, try it out. But to my mind, telling ongoing untruths is living in sin. It is gravely wrong. There is a persistent pattern of telling untruths. That, to my mind, is living in sin. And yes, I suggest that there is a conspiracy. So let us ask ourselves, who is behind this conspiracy and who has the most to gain from it? Supposing as a result of, the, of these campaigns, a significant number of committed Christians end up not getting vaccinated. Suppose the rest of the world gets vaccinated, but a significant number of Christians are put off getting vaccinated, leading to excess deaths among Christians. Now can you tell me who is the one who wishes for that? Who is the one who sees something to gain out of that? And then I ask another question. Some of these people who have been telling falsehood after falsehood after falsehood after falsehood claim to be pro-life. Now make a, may I make a complete distinction here. A complete distinction between those pro-life people who have worn their masks, who have honoured the lockdowns, 
but who because of the way that these vaccines were tes tested feel they cannot take the vaccine. I have deep respect for them. They are very close to my heart. They are a totally different group than these other people who have denied the reality of COVID-19 and resisted every reasonable measure to restrict the spread of COVID-19. Incidentally, one thing I find absolutely amazing. We know that the various processed foods have been tested in exactly the same way as the vaccines were tested. We know that soft drinks have been tested in the same way that the vaccines were tested. We know that face creams have been tested in the same way as vaccines were tested. Why is it that those people who are so vehement about the vaccines, about not taking the vaccines because of the way they're tested, appear to have no difficulties whatsoever with processed foods that were tested the same way, with soft drinks that were tested the same way, with face creams that were tested the same way. And I ask another question. Does not Jesus have a name for people like that? Does the name come to mind for you? It begins with a H, and Jesus is quoted exactly 20 times in the New Testament as using it. And to my mind, it, it applies to those who again and again and again and again are highlighting the way in which the vaccines were tested, but never ever say a single word, not a single word to say about the processed foods, about the soft drinks and the face creams that were tested in exactly the same way. Nobody would die as a result of abstaining from certain processed foods. Nobody would die as a result of abstaining from certain soft drinks. Nobody would die as a result of not using certain face creams. But people could die and will die as a result of not getting this vaccine. Now again, who is the one who desires for Christians to be unprotected against COVID-19. Who is the one that wants the whole world to be protected apart from Christians? And who is the one who desires for pro-life groups to be completely discredited? For pro-life groups who sadly will, could very easily end up getting tired with the same brush as these people who utter falsehood after falsehood after falsehood after falsehood. Who is the one that desires to see pro-life groups discredited? And again, some of these people claim to be working for renewal within the Catholic Church. And again, there is the danger that everybody who is working for renewal within the Catholic Church, everybody who is seeking to have the Catholic Church face what needs to be faced, there is the danger that everybody, that all of us will be tired with the one brush. Now, who is it that desires for all those who are working for a renewal within the Catholic Church to be discredited? And there's even a fourth factor. Those who believe all these falsehoods, as a result of believing all these falsehoods, they have ended up with ungodly resentment towards the Church, ungodly resentment towards the bishops, ungodly resentment towards the priests, and indeed ungodly resentment towards various other organizations as well. Now, who is the one who desires to see people stirring up resentment, carrying ungodly resentment? And I suggest to you that it is exactly the same one who desires to see the death of Christians. The ex exactly the same one who would love to see the rest of the world protected, but Christians not protected. Exactly the same one who desires to see pro-life groups discredited. Exactly the same one who would love to see those of us who are seeking to bring about purification and renewal within the Catholic Church discredited. Who would love to see resentment being 
stirred up against the church, against bishops, against priests, against various other groups. The one person, do I need to tell you who really is behind this great conspiracy? I don't think I do, because it is the old boy Satan himself. But I'm sure he's thrilled with the puppets on the string don't realise that that's exactly what they are. Puppets on Satan's string. Some are claiming that those of us who get vaccinated, that the very next time that we get a cold, we won't be able to resist it and we'll all die. I say to them, if you are one who have come to believe that, keep your eyes open. That's if you yourself don't die meanwhile of COVID-19. If you don't, keep your eyes open. And if by this time next year, you don't see all of us who got vaccinated beginning to drop off like flies the minute we catch a cold or catch the common flu, then I say to you, recognize that you have been had that you are being had. Recognize that your mind and your heart require a complete deep cleansing of all the falsehoods that you've taken on board. And then there are the claim messages from heaven. In fact, I've been sent several copies. I'll read an extract for you. Talking about the vaccine, it states, it brings a cutting edge chip and nanotechnology and it will control your minds and change your DNA, erasing the essence of God in you, ruling your souls and spirits. This vaccine is a trap of Satan. Now, once again, I say to you, particularly if you've been putting around those sort of messages, I say to you, open your eyes. Already quite a number of people have received the vaccine including Pope Francis, including Pope Emeritus Benedict, including several other leading churchmen, can you say that the essence of God has been erased? The claim is erasing the essence of God in you. Remember, this, this is supposed to be a message from heaven. Now, of those who have received the vaccine, what proof is there that Anybody has had the essence of God erased from them. And again, I say to you, if you have been spreading this sort of stuff around, giving it to other people, trying to frighten other people with it, I say to you, keep your eyes open. And if you're still alive, if you don't yourself die of COVID-19 since you won't have got a vaccine, keep your eyes open and see whether the essence of God has been erased in those of us who get the vaccine. I haven't got it yet, but I hope to get it fairly soon. If you come to realize that all this was not of God, that all the things you have believed and said were not of God, if you receive the grace to, to come to realize that, I beg you, realize also that your mind and heart require a deep cleansing. That your mind and heart require a deep cleansing. And the same applies to those who claim that COVID-19 is only an ordinary flu. Those who claim that masks cause you irreparable brain damage and damage your teeth and damage your gums. The same applies to those who believe that, there, that the real reason for the lockdowns was to control us. If you have believed any of those things, your mind and your heart is in need of an absolute deep cleansing. An absolute deep cleansing. And I pray that grace for all of us, because that indeed shall be our ongoing aim, the deep cleansing of our minds and of our hearts. 
Lord Jesus, at the Last Supper, you prayed that your followers would be sanctified in the truth. Sanctified in the truth. We pray, Lord, for the grace that people will realise that anybody who is telling falsehoods, that anybody who is telling things which any reasonable person should be able to know to be in some way untrue, that people will be able to recognise that such a person is not of you, that such a person has not been sanctified in the truth, that far from being sanctified in the truth, that some people, by their continuous falsehoods, are sadly living in sin. We pray, Lord, for the vulnerable people who have been misled by all the falsehoods, who have been unable to recognise all the falsehoods that have been coming at them. The grace, Lord, for such vulnerable people to be able to distinguish your followers, your true followers, from fake followers, false followers. We pray, Lord Jesus, for vulnerable people who perhaps are the, the only dedicated Christian in their own family, who are trying to lead their families to you. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they will not end up dying as a result of being scared from, from taking the vaccines by all the falsehoods that are being uttered. For ourselves, Lord, too, we pray the grace that we will truly be sanctified into truth. The grace, Lord, for a complete cleansing of our minds and of our hearts. Total openness to your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. We also bring to you, Lord Jesus, our own family situations, whatever special intention each person has. We pray, Lord, wisdom and protection wisdom and protection where this COVID-19 is concerned, wisdom and protection in all our decisions. But whatever prayer, whatever intention is in each person's heart, Lord Jesus, thank you that right now you're standing beside them. And may your blessing, your blessing, Lord, your blessing, Lord, come upon them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And do remember that this station, that this channel is dedicated to God who is love. And that there are certain standards we uphold on this channel. Say what you like to me. That's okay. But when you reply to other people's comments, I will be very strict. God is love. God bless you.